Okay, so I wanted to do a little update on the um, Buffalo Mass Shooter, Peyton Gandron. Uh, if you have not seen it, I have done a two-hour deep dive on Peyton Gandron that is up on my Odyssey channel. Just look for Radix Verum there. Um, and I have links to about 20, I think, 20 different sources. Um, I have archived uh, links to his Discord chat logs. Um, I don't know if I put the link to the zip file that contains the images. Um, you have to have a certain program to open those anyways. Otherwise, you're just going to see the text. So what's not being discussed uh, by anybody, as far as I know, when talking about this young man, is who was the individual named Arman that he was communicating with in Discord? Um, I believe that individual could be key to figuring out um, who goaded him into committing uh, the shooting. And look, I don't know if this was 100% a gay op, a glow op, a fed op, but it seems likely to me that that is the case. We know this guy was already on the uh, radar of authorities um, because of a threat of a school shooting. He was reported to New York State Police. He was sent to New York University for a psychiatric evaluation. And I believe he was, in fact, put on SSRIs. But he was someone who was clearly, severely autistic, possibly had Asperger's. Um, people like that are uh, very groomable. And now add to that being on SSRIs, being depressed, uh, being perhaps an incel, you know, maybe not having many friends. And then during COVID, he claims this is when he started going on these online forums and websites. Now, uh, 4chan actually has a little thing there saying you have to be 18 in order to access this. If he was doing that two years ago, he was in violation of 4chan's rules. He was not, in fact, 18 years old. But young people who don't know, like, what memes and shitposting is and take this stuff seriously, it is possible that they can become radicalized. But that, to me, seems unlikely. Having looked through everything I've seen, it appears to me that somebody was grooming him. And so... One of the things that really stands out to me as far as that goes is this person named Armand who he was communicating with in Discord. You can see these logs from March, March of 2022, several months ago, guys. This is, who who is this person? They need to be identified because I think this person, if they're not a federal agent, they perhaps were working for a federal agent. But listen to the tone of this conversation. Our man says, you're not going to die, effing moron. And um, Peyton, he uses the username Jimbo Boy with three eyes. He says, I could have done so much better. I'm sorry for being such a failure. So he's apologizing to this Armand character and he's saying, you know, I'm sorry I, I messed up, basically. He's trying to impress this person. He's apologizing that he didn't do better whatever it was that he was supposed to be doing. He says, A few days before the attack, I was at state lands and my gun wasn't working. And I had this huge urge to just end it all and kill myself. I just don't want to deal with all the struggles anymore, but I decided I might as well live one more day and walked back down to my car. Who, what, it, first of all, what attack was he talking about? And he's telling this guy he had his gun with him, but it wasn't working. So was, was this a shooting that was supposed to take place a couple months ago in March, but the gun wasn't working and, and malfunctioned or something. And because he wasn't able to carry out the attack, he comes and tells his FBI handler, look, I'm sorry, you know, I messed up. And because I'm so upset that I disappointed you, I wanted to kill myself. And then our man says something very, very interesting that is key. He says, was this from the first pledge video? And Peyton says yes. 
what pledge video? Was he pledging to an organization? Could it have been an organization like the O9A? The Order of Nine Angles? An occult organization similar to Temple of Blood that was, again, run by federal agents? We know that now. Martinet Press, Joshua Caleb Sutter, they were being paid by the FBI to publish and print neo-Nazi occult propaganda and books like Iron Gates. It came out during the Adam Waffen case that Joshua Caleb Sutter had been an FBI informant for decades, that he was taking young boys, he was grooming them, and he was getting them drunk, getting drugging that getting giving them drugs, and may have been performing brainwashing techniques on these guys. This is really important when you think about it. What pledge video? Where is this video? What who was he pledging to? And Peyton responds, yes. He says, I wish there was an option where I don't have to do this. So did somebody make him do it? What does it mean? I wish there was an option where I don't have to do this. I don't think I've said this, but suicide is all I can think about. For the last few days, every moment I'm conscious, I want to kill myself. I don't want to deal with this anymore. What is this that was so upsetting to him that was making him want to kill himself? And what did Armand tell him to do? Who is Armand? And why does it appear that he was grooming Peyton? I don't know if we'll ever know who Armand was, but even as recently as just a couple days ago, on the 14th, he says okay to him, and our man says, COVID F'd you that hard, LMAO, holy F U C K. So, who was our man? You know, I see a lot of people online talking about, oh, the dangers of people being radicalized on meme websites, places like 4chan or 8chan, oh, blah, blah, blah. And saying that we need more censorship and more crackdown. So you want to push these people further into fringe areas of the internet where you're not able to monitor them. Or where it's harder to monitor them and, and be alerted if they're doing something. The red flag thing, now they're pushing for red flag laws. They use these tragedies for political agendas. You know? How would that have prevented anything? It's very strange the way that uh, this whole thing has gone down and the lack of people talking about who was grooming this kid. He was a kid. He was 18 years old. Who was grooming him in Discord? The entire thing looks very sloppily put together. There are literal copy pasta from the Christchurch Shooters Manifesto. So a lot of it just came from that. Like, it seems to me that this was hastily put together and we need to know who this, who this guy Armand is that Peyton was communicating with. We need to know if that person was working for the federal government. Now, I think there is a reason to suspect this. When people say, oh, you're crazy, that, that's a conspiracy theory for asking these kinds of questions. Well, all you have to do is point to the Michigan Whitmer kidnapping plot that had 12 FBI informants, at least two undercover agents, and they ran the plot from start to finish. Even a jury found that to be what happened, FBI entrapment. And they let Brandon Caserta and Daniel Harris off. They acquitted them. They basically agreed with their defense attorneys that they had been entrapped by the FBI. Okay, we know this happens. If you watch my two-hour deep dive on Peyton Gendron, I've got um, several articles in there documenting FBI entrapment and overreach and corruption into creating these sorts of um, 
events that they can later, you know, foil or use to justify their own budgets. They did this in the wake of 9-11 to the Muslim community. We all know that. But when you try to say, well, that's what they're doing to these young men that the left claims as white supremacists under every rock, then they get angry. You're not allowed to say that the FBI entraps people and sets them up. Oh, no. We're not allowed to talk about that when it comes to so-called right-wing violent extremism. So it's just ridiculous. The double standards, the lack of curiosity and interest in finding out what actually happened, the rush to judgment and condemnations by these people, collective guilt, collective punishment, calls to censor, shut down platforms, take away people's civil liberties. That's something that really needs to be thought about and considered, the consequences of these actions because I don't think it's helpful at all. I think it's, in fact, this push in recent years, this crackdown that has sparked a backlash from people who are upset and have had enough of the constant attacks on them. You know, you can go on to any social media site and you can attack white people all day long. You can call for their deaths. You can call for their extermination and their genocide. You can collectively smear an entire race of people, if you want to call it that. But you can't do it with any other group because they have special protected status. So if whites in the majority are treated that way while they're a majority in their own countries, their own homelands in the West, how are they going to be treated when they become a minority? That is a valid question to ask. If you are familiar with, ha with what happened in Rhodesia, for example, what's happening in South Africa now. And I think it's these things that are causing people to have concerns, shall we say. If you would like to go through the Discord chat logs yourself and maybe comb through them and see if you can find any information I have the links to those in my Odyssey video. You know, I'll link the Odyssey video in the video description here so you guys can watch that for yourself. And, you know, as I said when I made that video, I don't have all the information about this kid. I was gathering what I could. I think the day it happened or the next day it happened. And I was gathering that and trying to archive it all before it disappears because this information tends to be scrubbed. So if I did get something wrong or if I missed something, I say that in the video to just let me know and I will continue to provide updates on this. So if anybody has any information that I missed, please let me know. If you notice that I got something wrong, uh, also let me know. A question, sh you know, something should also be said about the furry thing. Um, this kid was a furry. He was looking at furry stuff before he went in and committed the atrocity, the mass shooting. So that's kind of strange also, just saying. Uh, yeah. But anyways, um, we need to find out who Armand is and what this person knows if they are in fact working for the federal government. And if you guys can, see if you can find more chat logs between Peyton and Armand. Very, very, very important. Okay, if you have not subscribed to my channel already, please make sure you do so. Please hit the like button. Share this video. It really helps um, spread the channel. Uh, we're obviously going to be automatically demonetized and um, buried by the algorithm because of the things that I talk about in my lack of PC um, you know, nonsense. I refuse to deal with that. I'm just going to say it as it is. And because of that, they're not going to allow my channel to really grow. So I would appreciate if you guys would share this video and ask the question when you share it, who is Armand? Who was grooming Peyton Gendron in Discord? Was this person a federal agent? We need to identify this, this man. Who was Armand in Discord? That is the question. That is the million dollar question.